speaker, uh, Gianluca Mastrantonio from Politecnico di Torino. Uh, is going to speak about modeling the movement of multiple animals that share behavioral features. Uh, um, okay. Gianluca, you see it? Okay. So, first of all, thank you for inviting me to this conference. And uh, uh, we speak about a model that is connected to what the first two speakers uh, spoke about. And it's about uh, basically the Markov model, but it can be used to model multiple animals uh, at the same time. And the basic idea is that I want to see, I want to test or understand if a different animal can share some common characteristics in their behaviors, okay? So this is the data that I'm going to use. Uh, I have data for six dogs. They are observed at the Marema Sheep Dog. They are observed in Australia in a very large property. The owner of the property uh, has no control over the dog. They should be uh, controlling and keeping the livestock safe. And, uh, but the idea is just to understand what they do uh, during the day. We have observation every 30 minutes. So we have these GPS devices over the dogs. So every 30 minutes, we know the location of the dogs. We have five months of, of observation. These dogs are observed at the same time. But actually, this is not a requirement for the model. For this model, uh, the dogs or the animal can be observed at different times. Okay. Uh, there is There are some known characteristics of the dogs that uh, I think it's they are important because uh, we would like to observe this in the results of the model. And more precisely, there are four dogs that form a cohesive group that work together. There is a dog that is socially excluded from the other. So we, want, we would like to see this in the model output. And there is one dog that is really uh, old. So it's kind of solitary. Uh, here we have the observed location, the six dog. The dog that form a crazy group are dog one, two, five, and six, where we can see that their movement path kind of look the same. Uh, the property is uh, that this dog moves inside the property, but sometimes they go outside. The property is basically of a shape like this. And in this area here, in this area is where the livestock is. As we can see, the old dog, the third dog, uh, the, the movement, uh, um, there is less movement in the third dog. And in the fourth dog, the socially excluded one, it's kind of funny because there are a lot of position here for all the other dog, while this dog never goes into this area where the other five dogs are generally. So basic model. Uh, for each animal, I will define a need the markov model. So this the Markov model will be independent. And when you use an the Markov model, as the previous two speakers told us, there is a variable that represents the behavior assumed by the animal at any given time. Uh, given this behavior, the movement is described by a density. In this case, I use the stop density. That is a density that I proposed a couple of years ago. And I think it's kind of flexible, uh, easily interpretable. And that's why I'm using it. And, uh, but the, the important uh, um, aspect of this model at the, the stop is as five parameters. And I want to allow that different animal in different behavior can have some of these stop parameters in common. So we can say that there is something similar in the distribution that describes their movement. Okay, in these slides, I'm trying to explain a little bit how this density works so we can understand the interpretation of the parameter. So we have this path, this is just one animal. So this is the location time one, and this is the location time in T. Uh, they're moving up uh, by dimensional space. And the density uh, for uh, the location time I plus one, given the entire path, depends only on the previous two points. And it's just a normal with based on the last observed position plus this M vector. This M vector has kind of a complex form, but I think it's important just to know that uh, we have these parameters row that belong to zero one. So this vector is a weighted mean between this part here and this part here. In the next slide, I will show you the particular case where row is equal to zero, row is equal to one to see what these two part of the model do. And there is also this rotation matrix uh, that is based on the bearing angle. 
just to understand also a little bit this figure because I will use this figure to uh, describe the model. So if this is the location time S minus one, this is the location time high, the bearing angle is the angle that form the movement from this to previous time. And I will use a lot these ellipses. They represent an area that contains 95% of the total probability of the normal density. So with 95% probability, uh, the movement at time as psi plus one will be in this area. This vector here is what I call the expected movement because it goes from the last observed location to the mean of the normal density. Uh, here, for example, it's just the realization of the random variable. Now, let's see the case where rho is equal to zero. So this rho is equal to zero and rho is equal to one. Uh, when you try to move, uh, to move, when we try to model the movement of the animal, there are very different ways to do it, but there are two uh, very you know, good models model that have been used a lot, and that the models are called the bias random work and correlated random work. Uh, when rho is equal to zero, the stop reduces to a bias random work. This means that uh, when the animal moves, there is a point of attraction for the movement, and the point of attraction is this parameter law. For example, here we have the, uh, the expected value, the expected position of the animal at time i plus one is given by the previous position, plus this part here is the difference between the attractor, spatial allocation, and the last observation. Uh, this parameter tau is between zero and one. So what I say that when the animal is far away from the attractor, the expected values uh, tends toward the attractor mode. And the variance in this special case uh, is just seen. Uh, when rho is equal to one, the path is a correlated on the work, like Professor Black will just told us. Uh, in this case, what I have that for the expected value is again the previous location plus a displacement vector that is multiplied by the rotation matrix. Uh, so the, the idea here is that we are modeling the movement so that at each time point, the animal has a, a constant turn in one direction. The same turn is applied, the rotation matrix applied to the variance and covariance matrices. Okay. If we go back now to the uh, general models, we can see, so this is the part of the attraction, this part of the directional persistence. So this is the weighted means. And also the variance is multiplied by rho. So when rho is equal to zero, there is only attraction, the rotation matrix becomes the identity. This is sigma. For anything in between and zero and one, the covariance matrix is rotated, but not completely, okay? To really understand a little bit better the model, I think a picture is. Uh, much better. So this is the stuff for vector, uh, vector eta 0 0.7, the attractor is 0, 0, tau is 0 0.5. So when the, this, is, this one is the case where rho is equal to 0, there is only attraction, and rho is equal to 1, there is only directional persistence. Uh, the, the points of the red arrow is the position of the animal at time si. So the animal is in this position, it's coming from that direction, and we expect to find the animal the next time in this area. And the black arrow is the expected movement. As we can see, this is the attractor, mu, zero, zero. And all the expected movement points to the attractor. And uh, since this is the distance between the last point and the attractor and tau is equal to 0 0.25, we expect to cover at each 10 point 0 0.25, the distance between the last point and the attractor. In the other case, when there is only directional persistence, we can see, uh, of course, the attractor plays no role in this case, but we can see that if the animal is coming from this direction, in the next 10 point, we expect to go to the left and there is this angle of 90 degree. If it's coming from this direction, we expect, again, another turn of 90 degree. It doesn't matter which place in this space the animal is, it always turn of 90 degree. If you try to see what happens when the row is not equal to zero, one, but something in between, for example, one over third, we have a, a strong attraction to the point, but also a little bit of directional persistence. So when we have only attraction, for example, for this point here, we will expect that the uh, 
expected direction will be this one. If there is only attraction is this one. And so the real expected direction is something in between, closer to the attraction, but there is also directional persistence. If we increase rho, again, this is only if there is directional persistence, this is if there is only attraction, and the movement is closer to the one that we obtain with only directional persistence. So now let I introduce the, the real model, the Eden Markov model. Uh, we have one Eden Markov model for each animal, I indicate with J the Jf animal. Zeta Ji is the behavior assumed by the animal J at time i. And theta is the vector that contains the parameter of the stop, the attractor, displacement, the covariance matrix, the strength of attraction. And this parameter tells me which kind of model is, how much persistence or much attraction there is. The basic idea is uh, uh, that I will estimate this model, I will implement this model using the Dirichlet process. This is because when you try to implement an each, uh, an the macro model, in animal movement, what's another context? You have to fix kind the number of latent state. And then using, I don't know, DSC, BSC, DSC, something like this to select the, the best model. But here we have six animals, and we cannot really assume that the animal has, or animal have the same number of behaviors. So we have to compute all possible combination. It becomes a little too messy. So I decided to use the Dirichlet process because allow me to select as a model parameter, the number of behavior for each animal. Here, uh, another thing to note is the vector parameters of the sub parameters are animal independent. It does not depend on the animal. So each animal has the same potential behavior, but K goes from one to infinity. So we have potentially infinite, infinite behavior and the animal can choose from this. Now, uh, the model is quite complex, but it can be divided into parts. The first part is this one where we model the uh, movement of the animal. And this is basically an the Markov model, nothing really fancy. Uh, this is a probability vector of the animal J. Uh, so we have this transition matrix of the, uh, of the transition matrix. This is the row L of this transition matrix. It's Dirichlet process distributed, kind of a Dirichlet distribution. And the behavior at time i, given that at the previous time the behavior was h, and given the transition matrix, is a multinomial with the rho h of pi, given that the behavior at time i is w, uh, the observation are distributed as a stop with theta w. So again, it's quite easy. Uh, what's just important to note is that if we take this, this is a vector probability. If we take just one element, this is the probability for animal J to go from behavior L to behavior K. Uh, its expected values is a function of beta K. Beta K, this is a vector and it's a probability vector. And if we increase beta k, we increase the probability or the expected values of the probability to go from any behavior to behavior k. Now, the uh, novelty on this work is how we will define the distribution over theta k, over for k that goes from one to infinity. And now I will define the distribution of the probability vector. And there, there are a lot of distribution, but actually I think it's kind of easier to, to explain it. So we have the five parameter of the stuff. Okay, we have mu, eta, sigma, tau, rho. For each of these, I define a discrete distribution. So this is a discrete distribution, and I'm saying that with probability, for example, beta star mu one uh, is selected the values mu star one. So it's a discrete distribution. To construct this distribution, one for each parameter, I sample the atoms of the distribution from a distribution H, which is we can think of it like a prior distribution. And the vector probability, so the entire vector of all the beta are from this gem distribution. Again, it's another way to see to say that beta is from a Dirichlet distribution, but with number of possible values that is infinite. Another possible way to see this different distribution, just say that G mu star or all the other G are a sample from a Dirichlet process with parameter gamma. 
which is the parameter of the gem distribution and base distribution H mu, which is the distribution that we use to sample the atoms. Now we have to find a way to take these values. So this or star to star and so on, and to build the parameter theta k that we will use for the hidden Markov model. So we pile up all the parameters. So we take all the infinite values of the parameter mu p star, and we define this vector mu star. The same holds for eta, sigma, tau, and rho. And we define the vector theta k as a all the all the set of vector theta key as the all possible combination of these five parameters or the Cartesian product. What I mean is that we take this the infinite values of mu of eta and all the other parameters, and we define this theta k as all possible combination without repetition. So there will be no theta that are the same. Theta k and theta k star will be different. But there will be some parameter in common. I will explain a little bit later what I mean with that. Okay. So, for example, the intro theta one, there will be one possible of this mu p. There will be one of this eta p, and so on and so on. And so we can introduce basically this variable that tells us which one of these elements, the star variable, are inside theta. This is because we can construct the vector theta, but we want also to construct the vector of probability beta. So since the vector probability beta and, for example, the first element of the beta will be connected to the first element of theta, we want beta to be defined as the product of all the beta of the parameter that are inside theta. So the idea is this, if the first theta k I use the first values of mu, at the second view values of eta, the beta associated should be the first of this one that multiply the second of this one. Now, and I use this function C2AC1 just to do that, this task. So to, to understand why this actually, this simple idea, I think it's kind of simple, uh, allow us to test and to see if different animal can share part of the behavior. Uh, let's suppose, for example, that we have these two vectors, theta k and theta is the vector parameter of the stop for behavior k, and theta k prime is the vector of uh, stop parameter for behavior k star. So they must be different because by constructor, they must be different. But theta again, I constructed using all possible combination. This means that they are different as a vector, but we can have the strength of attraction of, of the K behavior be exactly the same of the strength of attraction of the K prime. We can have rho equal to rho K prime, but since, since these two must be different, all the other, or at least one of the other must be different. So each K, each theta K uh, identify a different behavior, but animal that behave differently can still have something in common. Uh, of course, we have to try to understand also what the beta uh, or the beta star, uh, what's the meaning of those beta star. And as I showed before, the beta k, so the, the element beta k, increases the probability to move from any behavior to behavior k for all the animal, j. But since we define this beta k as the product of all the beta star, we can see that these beta star are a way to tell, uh, we can kind of uh, interpret this beta star as the probability to select that particular values of the parameter in each of the behaviors. So it's the probability to select a particular values of the parameter mu for this one, eta for this one, and so on. The final model is, as, as you can see, it, just a little bit messy, I think, but it, exactly what uh, I show you, this is the hidden Markov model for each animal, which depends on the beta and the theta. This is the prior distribution of the parameter of the stop. This is the prior distribution for the probability. The two functions, C1, C1 and C2, construct the vector of theta. C1 construct the element of beta that are used for the 
the beta for the probability to switch behavior and theta for the description of the behavior. Uh, just uh, this part here is actually, a, uh, it's called the stick hierarchy addition process of uh, was I need the Markov model proposed by, uh, I think Fox, Fox et al. in the analysis of statistics. And this part here is, let's say my contribution. So this is kind of an extension of the stick hierarchy of the in the Markov model. Now you can see some of the results. Uh, I implemented this model in a Bayesian setting because I, I don't think it's possible to implement it from the African plus one. And I have to, we have to define the distribution H. So the attractor is sample from a normal, the displacement from a normal, we have tau from the uniform, sigma from an inverse vision, while for rho, uh, I call that rho equals zero identify a, a model with only attraction, or equal one a model with only directional persistence, while rho between zero and one is a stop, something in between. And I want to be able to tell if one behavior is uh, exactly if one behavior is only ruled by the attraction or so it's zero, only by the directional persistence, so one or at both characteristics. So I use this mixed type distribution saying that the probability a prior, a priori, the probability for rho to be equal to zero is equal to one over three. To be equal to one is uh, one over three, while it's uniform between zero and one, zero and one excluded. There are also some other prior distribution for the parameters of this, are the parameters of the transition matrix, and this for the Dirichlet processes. And now we can kind of look at the results. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, we have these six dogs, and for five dogs, the model finds three behavior. And just for one, it finds two. Okay. Now, again, for each of the parameters of the model and for each behavior, we can actually have, we have a probability that tells us if they are exactly the same values. So for example, here, we have the six dog, this is the attraction, the attractor. We have the six dog here and the six dog here. The B are the behavior, so behavior one, behavior two, behavior three of the first dog and so on. As you can see, only this one is two behavior. And I read, uh, square indicates a probability that is close to one, a white is close to zero. As we can see, for example, it's interesting that the dog one, two, five, and six are the dog from the cohesive group. And in the third behavior, the dog one, dog two, five, and six, they have basically the same attractor. There's a probability almost one that the attractor is the same. Why dog two, dog three, and dog four, uh, this is the excluded one, socially excluded. This is the old one. Uh, the attractor, yeah, a little bit for the old one, but for the excluded one, it, it has no attractor equal to the other one. Uh, we can actually, uh, I, I don't think it's really helpful to, to look at this picture. This picture, just, just to give you an idea that we can actually compute and evaluate what the, the similarities between the behaviors. For example, here for sigma, there is a lot of similarities, but I think it's more, interesting to look at pictures of the behavior. And so uh, I first show you the behavior of the cohesive group. So we have three behavior for each of the animal. And the first behavior is the one that has the highest number of temporal points associated. Uh, this is the first behavior. The, as before, the uh, black arrow is the previous direction. Okay, let's suppose the animal goes from this direction. There should be a red arrow. They indicate the expected direction, but it's basically it's zero. You really, it's this one here. You really cannot see it, okay? So the animal kind of stays on the previous direction and moves a little bit. And here, this is not an ellipse circle. So the animal basically is stay there and moves a little bit around the previous location. And as you can see in this four, for this for dog, the behavior is basically the same, with really small differences. In the second behavior, first of all, uh, know that here the scale between minus 0 0.1 and 0 0.1, here the scale between 1, minus 1, 1, so there is a lot more movement here, so we can expect the animal to be in a larger area. Again, there is the previous direction in black, and there should be an expected direction, expected movement, but Again, is a vector of zero. 
But here we can kind of see a little bit of directional persistence because, for example, here is an ellipse like this. Don't look at two minutes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I'm done. Thank you. So if you go from this direction, there is this ellipse. If you go from this direction, there is this other one. Okay. The third one is the most interesting. Again, the scale from minus one one is from minus two point five to two point five. A lot of movement, and there is a lot of uh, attraction. This is the attractor for an animal. It's very similar between the four dogs. And here is basically where the ships are, where the livestock is. So in this behavior, they are going and they are staying with the with the ship, okay? Uh, but you know that the behavior is not the same. For example, here the tractor is a little bit less of this other one. This is longer than this one. Um, then we have the animal, the old dog. Uh, it has only two behavior. And as we can see, it has the first and the second behavior of the other two dog. And what is missing is the third one. And the third one is basically the one with the highest speed, highest movement. So maybe she is too old to do it. That's what I think it's happening. And the most interesting one probably is the socially excluded dog. As we can see, it has the third behavior, which is similar to the first behavior of the other dog. It has the second behavior, which is similar to the second behavior of the other dog, even though there is a little bit here of attraction that was not present in the other dog. Well, what is most interesting is the first behavior. So the first behavior is the one with the highest number of temporal points, and the attraction is so strong, it's basically one. So it doesn't matter what the animal is, at the next time point, we will find it always here. And this attractor here is not the same of the other dog. The other attractor for the other dog is kind of here, while here is a little bit different. And uh, the reason is this one is where the ships are. This location here is where the house of the owner is. So this animal is excluded from the other. It spent most of this time uh, close with the owner, probably close to the house of the owner. Uh, OK, I'm done, just some questions conclusive remarks and uh, the basic idea, I think what it's important to, uh, to take away point. Uh, I think this model is quite flexible. It's complex, but it's actually really easy to implement. Uh, even from a Bayesian point of view, everything can be done with Gibbs steps. Just one parameter requires some metropolis, uh, wrong, just wrong, but some metropolis, so the other parameter can be done with uh, Gibbs step. It's actually very easy to uh, implement. Uh, uh, to uh, so sorry, it's really easy to understand and to uh, interpret. And I assure you that in the real data, the result that we obtain makes sense and it's useful to understand similarity between these animals. And I'm done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Gianluca. Um, well, I guess we are almost over with time, but maybe if there is just one quick question. Uh, for Gianluca, we can handle it. No questions. Okay. I just actually was curious about uh, uh, knowing if you have any idea of how to uh, consider selection or uh, auxiliary information within the model. What do you mean selection? Well, like uh, information on the environment. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah, I think you can do it. I, I think it's quite easy because actually in this stop, it's a normal density. So you can introduce covariates here if you uh, if you want to. I never did it, but I think it's kind of possible. So you, maybe you can model attraction with some kind of covariates and they use it uh, in that way. Uh, I never tried, but I, I think it's maybe possible. I don't know from implementation point of view if it's feasible, but I hope so. Okay, so I see that somebody is coming to <laughs> pick us up. So uh, thank you to both the, the three speakers uh, and uh, leave the floor to Monica and probably then to Amira. Uh, 